Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. This is part 18 to my RPG Basics tutorial series, and in this video, we're going to be fixing the movement for the enemies because the way that they're set up to move right now is not the best. And let me explain what I mean. If we go into the enemy slime object and go into its creative end, we can see we have a, a speed here for our enemies. If we set this speed to something like 2, which is obviously way too fast, but if we were to do that, you'll notice that when the enemies move around in the room, they move really like twitchy and it looks really bad. So the code we were using before only really worked because... Because they because of the slow speed that they had. Two is way too fast. They, they just kill you. But yeah, it looks horrible because they're all twitchy. So we're going to be fixing that today. Let's, for now, leave our speed at two. Um, go into your enemy states. And then open up the enemy chase state right here. And we're actually going to want to fix the enemy wander state as well. But what what we're gonna do is we're going to we're gonna get a direction, uh, and then we're gonna use that direction to move the enemy instead of just adding this little trick right here where we took the sign of the target x minus r x. We're gonna be using the direction to the target now. So var dir equals um, point direction. We're going to do uh, x, y, target, x. Let me move this over to make sure that it shows up nice here. Target, y. Okay, so we've got the direction now pointing to the target. Now we need to get the amount that we need to move on our x axis and the amount that we need to move on our y axis. So we're going to call this var h speed var v speed. Now h speed is going to be the x axis movement so we're going to do length dir x. The length that we're going to do is speed which is the enemy's speed. The direction is dir which is the direction that we just calculated right here towards the player. And we can do the same thing for our v speed except you want to change this from length dir x to length dir y. Now we're going to, instead of doing this right here, we're going to add the h speed and the v speed right here. Okay, so we've changed the way this works now. We're getting a direction first. We're getting a horizontal speed and a vertical speed using length their x and length their y, which uses the direction we got. And then we're, you, then we're adding those to the physics x and physics y position. So I'm going to just copy this, which we'll see and paste it into our wander state as well. Now it might be a good idea to throw this into a script as well because um, copying and pasting code should be a red flag for you if you're ever copying and pasting code like this. You might want to say how can I turn this into a script um, that moves you know so then you can just call the script and it does all of this for you if you're if you're doing this multiple times in a row. For now though, since we just have this one enemy, I'm just going to leave it like that. If I were to get multiple enemies, I would probably turn that into a script. So now, the enemies should... See, look how much smoother that looks. That looks so much nicer than what it was before. It still looks a little weird because the enemies move the same speed as the player. Um, we probably don't want them to move that fast. But that just looks so much nicer than it did before. So let's go into our enemies. And let's change the speed here to a speed of 1. And then another thing we're going to do is a lot of you have been asking me how to make the enemies face towards the player in the direction the player's facing. So if we go into our chase state right here, there's a little trick that we can use that will that will make the player or make the the slime face the player when it's moving. And the way you can do that is you can just do image x scale equals sine h speed. This should make it so that the x scale amount of our enemy 
is going to be either 1 or negative 1 because sine will always return either 1 or negative 1. So if it's 1, it will have it facing to the right. If it's negative 1, it will have it facing to the left. Now the enemy, while it's chasing us only, it should face us, and you can see it does that. If I come over here, it flips around. If I come over here, it flips back around. One seems like a pretty good speed for the slimes. You guys can kind of determine what, what speed you want for the slimes. Uh, but one doesn't seem like too bad of a speed. We do want to um, make it so they face the direction they're moving all of the time, though. So I'm going to copy this as well and put it inside of the wander state when the enemy's just wandering so that it moves, so that it faces the direction it's moving when it's inside the, the wander state as well. And there we go. Yeah, looks pretty good. Now this should work for any other type of enemy that you put in the game. Oh, that's interesting. Did you see that? I wonder what was causing that. I saw a glitch there. I don't know if you guys saw it. I might have to... Uh, I might have to try and find that one outside of this video and then fix it in the next video. But this should work for any enemy that you want to do that only faces two directions. Um, and I would actually highly recommend trying to make your enemies only face two directions as much as you can because it takes a lot of time to program or to do the art for enemies that face all four directions. And you can actually pull it off quite well. I mean, these enemies look really good only facing two directions. I have a bunch of enemies inside of Grain War that only face two directions, and I'm able to pull it off and make it look, look good in the game still. So I would actually recommend trying to set it up so that they only need to face two directions, and they don't need to face uh, all four directions, because that's just a lot of extra work for not really much extra gameplay. It doesn't really add that much gameplay to the game. If you look at Hyperlight Drifter, in fact, there's quite a few different, or even Nuclear Throne. All of the sprites in Nuclear Throne only face two directions, even the main characters. So you can pull it off and make it look good still. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching so much. I'm going to be uploading. I'm actually going to be recording right after this video. I'm going to be recording a video for the random level generation series. So you guys should be seeing that up on my channel here soon as well. And then I'm almost finished with the, with the input mapping tutorial that I'm going to do for you guys to teach you guys how you... What if I added that into this tutorial series? I could do that, but I think I want it to be a separate tutorial. So I'm going to do input mapping um, in a separate tutorial for you guys as well. So uh, those should be up really soon this week. Sorry this one is a little bit late, but thank you guys so much. Be sure and like this video if it helped you, and I will talk to you guys later.